Our next guest, smash single Hotter Now, the most added top 40 song on Canada's airwaves during its very first week out. Yes, and the Congolese Canadian is a Juno nominated artist, breaking barriers and empowering listeners one hit at a time. We're lucky to have her with us today. Please welcome the fabulous Lou Kala. <laughs> You're a full-blown pop star, but it sounds like the music industry is trying to, to put you into a whole different genre. What is the story behind this? It's definitely really tough being a black woman making pop music. I think a lot of times people just automatically want to throw like the R&B pop at you. And I'm like, I don't make R&B at all. I love R&B music, but I would never play on an R&B station, even mm -hmm. if I wanted to. I make like real pop mainstream pop so mm. I definitely have to fight that battle a lot yeah but I'm lucky now because I'm playing all over the radio in Canada yeah. you know? we had we had three top 10 singles in last year like on the radio so um and all in pop so I'm grateful about that huge Fantastic. congratulations um your songs are so catchy and they've been described as anthems of self-love and empowerment during the writing process is that something that you're thinking about so funny enough like I'm actually not. I think a lot of people do try to go for that. Um, but I just write about myself. So Pretty Girl Air, I was literally feeling myself. I was drinking my water, you know, I was going to the gym. Mm. I was doing my nails, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember on my way to the studio, I saw this tweet that's like, uh, my dream girl is me and my full potential. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that is literally it because I'm in my Pretty Girl era. So I literally write these songs about how I feel about myself. Mm. But I'm so happy that other women and other people are seeing themselves reflected in me, mm -hmm. and I'm giving them a little confidence, so we love to see yes. it. Yes. <laughs> we love the confidence. All right, so you're a Toronto girl. And I'm I a Toronto girl. Yes, we love that, and I understand that you grew up in a very full house. You were yeah. the second youngest out of eight kids. Wow. I, don't, I don't know what my mom and dad were thinking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's uh, a lot of babies. It's All right. a lot of babies. So how did growing up in a full house affect your career, or the career choice? Well, the good thing is there was, a, like, a lot of love. Like, you know, like, now me as an adult, I have so much love from, like, all my siblings and my parents and what I'm doing. Um, but growing up, like, you were fighting for the attention because, mm -hmm. like, I felt like I was the middle child. I feel like second last to eight, you're kind of just a random child. <laughs> but my parents were definitely the first stage. So I remember growing up and I was giving performances and singing and dancing for them. So I don't know. I think, like, that's how I was able to find my confidence and find myself in these big rooms because I grew up doing it in front of my family. That's yeah. awesome. Listen, I heard you first on TikTok, and I understand that TikTok uh, recently honored you as one of its Black TikTok 2024 Visionary Voices. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And they're recognizing black creatives who are breaking boundaries, which is definitely what you are doing. So what does this recognition mean to you? How does it feel? First of all, I'm literally dying at the montage right behind me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it means a lot. Um, I don't know, like I was on that list with other artists such as Victoria Monet and Coco Jones and just massive creators of every kind of like genre, music, film, people just exceed, um, excelling in what they do. Mm -hmm. And for the world to kind of like, for TikTok to recognize me as an artist and someone who has a vision and is breaking barriers, like mm -hmm. that meant the world to me. Mm -hmm. Because again, I, I don't like saying this story over and again, but being a black woman making pop music, you are kicking down doors every 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I would love to be able to do this just for me, but I have to do it for everybody else. It's not, it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so. what a beautiful son. We cannot look at you and not realize you have an impeccable, distinct, individual style. What is the thing, the one thing in your look when you put yourself together that is your must-have? Yeah, I mean, the hair's always orange. I don't know if y'all realize, but it's always orange. But I love having a little purse. And I think what was a game changer for me is jewelry. I never wore jewelry before. What? But now I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't leave the house with all the jewelry. <laughs> dripping, <laughs> dripping. Uh, Lou, I know you've been so busy. So the fact that you've been able to make a stop for us here, we really appreciate it. And we just love cheering on a home girl, mm -hmm. hometown girl, and just taking over the world. We're so proud of you and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so cool. We want to say also best of luck at the Juno Awards. Thank yeah. you. It is my first time ever being nominated. Whoa. You know, breaking new artists 
and song of the year. So I'm like wow. really shocked about that. And I'm really hoping I take home a win. Yeah. And if I like, if I do, it's gonna be way bigger than me. If I don't, I'm just grateful that I was nominated. Amazing. So, amazing. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you.